Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220 Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual today, I am your professor, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, this is the first lecture for lecture 23, for which we are going to focus on the concept of a centroid. Now, to, to give us an understanding of what that means, think of the following basic idea. We're all familiar with the concept of balance, right? As, as human beings, we walk around and we fall over all the time and we try not to fall over. We're used to this idea of balance, an even distribution of weight, enabling someone or something to remain upright and sturdy uh, at all times, right? And as children, we often even played with balancing toys and attempt to make them balance in very interesting or difficult positions, right? We often have one of those little birds hanging on our finger at one point. Uh, we like these idea of a balancing toy. And so while trying to balance the toy or a pencil or whatever, there appears to be a single point which, if supported, the toy will balance perfectly on its own. Um, and as children, we were searching for this center of balance, or in science, it's sometimes called the center of mass or center of gravity. Uh, in mathematics, we're, gonna, we're also interested in the center of mass, and this is what we mean by when we say centroid. Uh, like in this context, this center of gravity is our centroid that we're looking for. Now, suppose that we have a uniform plank, uh, that is to say a plank of uniform density. Maybe like we're playing teeter-totter or seesaw, you know, back in the day when uh, children were allowed to play dangerously. Nowadays, these are thought of as a child catapult, right? Um, if we were trying to balance this seesaw, where might the center be? Well, since everything's completely uniform, the idea is to put the fulcrum, the balancing point, right here uh, under the midpoint, the place that is halfway, halfway across, uh, halfway in the middle. Again, if it's completely uniform, it's going to be the midpoint of this corresponding line segment. Now suppose that this same plank which we're using for a seesaw now, has two children playing together on the board, right? So let's draw this again. Now we have two children, and uh, I'm just going to draw them as blobs, right? You get one blob over here. And if the two children are equal in their mass, then again, the board will be balanced, and you can put the fulcrum in the middle. But what happens when you have the sad little child who goes to the playground all by herself. She doesn't have anyone to play with. Well, dad's going to play with her. Woohoo, right? But you put dad on the other side. The problem is, well, dad is much more massive than, than, than his daughter right here. And so therefore, this shifts the center of gravity, right? So that if we place the center of gravity in the middle, when the daughter goes up, right, um, she doesn't have enough mass to to, to, to bring herself back down because the dad over here is just too massive, in which case she kind of gets stuck in the air. Well, dad realizing it's not really fun for her, his little girl to be stuck in the air, he kind of jumps himself in the air, thus propelling her downward. But then of course the problem is when she's down and dad's up, she doesn't have enough torque to keep her down and therefore the child catapult occurs and we lose, we lose little Susie right here. That, that's a problem, right? And so the issue here is that for the typical seesaw, if the, if the mass has been moved, if we have a greater mass on the right, the center of gravity also has to kind of shift over so these things are balanced. And there were some seesaws, teeter-totters, whichever you call them, which you could actually move the fulcrum towards the heavier child or towards the parent. That way it would be balanced and therefore children could recreate in a more desirable fashion, right? And so we have some personal experience perhaps with this, you know, if, if you blew up, if you grew up in a, in an environment where playgrounds were considered acceptable, many of us live a very sheltered life nowadays, but we can generalize this idea. That is, if we consider the mass of objects in the, and the center of gravity will then gravitate towards the more massive object, consider we have indistinct objects in objects, which, um, uh, they're going to be, we're going to orient them along the x-axis of some kind. So we have indistinct objects distributed over, uh, well, well, not necessarily the x, well, yeah, we'll keep it with the x-axis, in objects, uh, and so things like this. We have our x-axis. So we got one object here, one object here, one object here, another object here. And so we have these elements x1, x2, 
X3, and X4. At the moment, I don't necessarily claim that these are uniformly distributed across the x-axis. We just have these, these objects here. Now, each of these objects has a mass associated to it. So we get mass 1, mass 2, mass 3, and mass 4. So you can see by the way I drew, drew these objects, little mass 2, it's such an adorable little thing, it's so cute and small. And then mass 4 over here, so big, so massive. These objects have different masses associated to them. And so in order to find the center of gravity, what we have to do is we have to calculate a so-called weighted average. The center, like if we want to place the fulcrum, where is it going to go? Here, 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 here. It's hard to tell, right? Where does this fulcrum go? We don't know. Um, we're looking for this so-called X bar. Here, we're using X bar. This is a notation we borrow from statistics where the bar over variable indicates we're finding the center or the mean or average of that thing. And so to find X bar here, what we're going to do is we're going to take two sums. So first, we're going to take a sum from I equals 1 to N, where we're going to take together all of the values MI times XI. XI is the location of the objects. MI is the weight of that object, right? So we're going to take this sum on the top, this weighted sum, and then on the bottom, we're going to divide it, we're going to divide by the total number of weights that are in play. We add together all of the MIs. And so this gives us a so-called weighted average. And so for a typical student, we're probably used to this type of idea because weighted averages is how grades are calculated in a course of some kind. Um, in which case you take, uh, you take like your average, like, oh, I had 90% on homework. I had 30% on quizzes. Yeah, I know, big drop there. But I had 87% on exams. And so you take the weights, like, well, maybe homework was 10%. Quizzes were 15%. Exams were whatever's left. Uh, and so we have this weighted average going on there. And so the weighted average can be used to find the center of mass. We could do this for X bar. We could also do the same thing for a Y bar, right? Like if we had things distributed across the Y axis, we could find the weighted average Y bar. And so this can be useful to help us find the center of gravity. So imagine, uh, as you can see here, let's find the center of mass for the system of three objects you can see on the screen. These objects have a mass of 3, 4, and 8, and they're located at negative 1, 1, 2, negative 1, and 3, 2, respectively. So the green object is the lightest of all of them. It's only worth 3 units of mass. It's located at negative 1, 1. The red object is slightly more massive, but not by much. Um, it's going to be located at 2, negative 1. And then the yellow object is the most massive. It's, it's worth 8 units of mass. And so one can ask, where is the center of mass, which you can see it already indicated in our drawing right here. But, and, and intuitively, that does seem to be like the middle, but how does one calculate such a thing? Well, using the notation we did before, let's figure out what the total mass of the system is. So we're going to take the sum where i equals 1 to 3, just three objects here. We're going to add up the mi's. And so this is just 3, excuse me, 3 plus 4 plus 8. We see that the total mass in this system here is going to be, well, four and eight is 12 plus three is 15. So there's 15 units in play right now. To find X bar, um, we're gonna compute on top the so-called moment, MI times XI, and then we divide this by the total mass, which is the sum of the MIs right here. And so we know there's gonna be a 15 on the bottom, so on the top, we're going to take 3 times its location, negative 1, plus 4 times the location of the red point, 2, and then add that 8 times the location of the third one, 3. We're just looking at the x-coordinates right now. So we get negative 3 plus 8 plus 24 over 15. And so we can see that we can simplify this, of course. Um, 8 take away 3 is a 5, plus 24 is 29. So you get 29 over 15. This is our x bar. This would be the y or the x coordinate of the center of mass. 29 fifteenths is just a little bit shy of 30 fifteenths, which would be two. And so you're going to see that the center of mass is slightly to the left uh, of x equals two. That gives you x bar. Y bar is computed similarly. We first start off with this moment, m i y i over the total mass. 
in which case, again, this is all over 15. Uh, this time, though, it's giving me a similar sum. It's just that we're going to use y coordinates instead of x coordinates this time. We get 3 times 1 for the green one. We're going to get 4 times negative 1 for the red one. And we're going to get 8 times 2 for the, uh, for the yellow one. In which case, we get 3 minus 4 plus 16, right, all over 15. Uh, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, plus 16 is 15. So we get 15 over 15, which is equal to 1. And so the y-coordinate of the center of mass here would be 1. So in particular, our centroid for this system of three objects would be 29 over 15, comma, 1. And so we calculate this weighted average of the x-coordinates. We calculate the weighted average of the y-coordinates, and this gives us the center of mass. Many of us in the past have learned a formula for the midpoint. The midpoint of two points, x bar, y bar, this is going to just be the x1, x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. So in this system where you calculate the midpoint, this is just a special case of this weighted average we're doing right now. In this situation, um, each of the points has the same weight of 1. So kind of like when we had the seesaw before, when you had two equally massed children on the two sides. They each have a mass of 1, thus the total mass is 2. You add them together, divide by 2. That gives you the x bar, the y bar. And therefore, the center of mass will be found in the middle, the geometric midpoint. But in like in space, if you have like three, uh, three stars working on each other in terms of gravity, their center of mass, their center of gravity would not necessarily be the middle, geometrically speaking. It'll be pushed closer to the more massive object. And this is how we can find, uh, this is how we can find the center of gravity in sort of this simple, uh, discrete setting.